Next up, we have a pretty interesting prospect in Dylan Raddins, the offensive tackle out of North Dakota State. And I say it's interesting because you really do kind of have to wonder just how many people would be as high on him as they are and how many people would have even found him in the first place uh, had he not played with Trey Lance, right? And, you know, with, with so many people um, being infatuated by that QB position, you know, they're, they're constantly watching Trey Lance and, hey, you know, your eyes will drift sometimes and you'll see, um, you know, who's that big left tackle that's doing a dang good job protecting him, right? Um, I'm, I'd be interested to know just how many people were on uh, Raiden's really before um, before Trey Lance was really a household name. I think that's something that would be interesting. Uh, since 1990, I believe, only two North Dakota State players have been drafted in the same draft, ironically. Uh, once it was 2003 when there was a early, early round running back and then a late round offensive lineman. And then 2016, when you saw Carson Wentz, obviously go second overall. And then Joe Haig, uh, another lineman, ended up going later. So not saying that he wouldn't have been drafted otherwise, but I really do think that um, you kind of got to wonder just how much of his exposure has been due to Trey Lance. In terms of his just sort of measurables, as well as his pro day numbers, however, um, an interesting guy, right? 6'6", 298, which is a little bit uh, lighter than most tackles that you typically see uh, at the NFL level. I know he weighed in at 301 at his pro day, but not a real significant difference there. Obviously only three pounds um, in terms of his other sort of testing numbers ran a 511 40 yard dash at a nine, four broad jump, 24 reps on bench uh, and a 7.273 cone. So not, not a crazy good nor crazy bad day uh, out of Radins. I would, I was a little bit surprised at the bench press numbers. I felt like, on tape, he looked stronger than that. As you can see, as we get into my grade, you know, I gave him a seven out of 10 for strength. I was a little bit surprised um, that he only did 24 reps, but um, it is really tough to evaluate a guy um, who plays at such a small school by comparison to say, oh, Alex Weatherwood, Jackson Carmen, Penny Sue, all these other guys that um, we have done or will do to this point, right? It's, it's a difficult evaluation because, um, you know, if you just based these numbers solely off of how he did against that random defensive end from Delaware. Um, yeah, I would say he certainly looked better than an 18.25 in pass pro, a 12.5 in run block, right? But the problem is that he's not going to be going up against guys of that caliber at the next level. Um, so I kind of accounted for that a little bit in my grades, just because I do have some question marks in terms of how those various uh, sort of traits and abilities will translate. I think that his technique was generally pretty sound, um, and really everything was pretty sound, right? The, the last two guys I've talked about in terms of Tevin Jenkins and Sam Cosme, I felt like had some pretty big technical um, concerns. Whereas with Raddins, I felt like he was generally positive, right? I feel like he had good hand placement, uh, generally had pretty good balance. Occasionally would get dumped every now and then, uh, have a little bit too much forward lean, but um, nothing you can't really fix. In terms of his physicality, I thought like he generally was, was doing a good job playing to the whistle, driving guys, uh, into the dirt. There were a couple plays, you know, one play actually from the central Arkansas game. Uh, he, you know, they're backed up to right around their own end zone and QB draw, I believe Raddins ends up getting behind Trey Lance and keeps up with Lance like 25, uh, 30 yards down the field until he ultimately uh, pancakes one guy and he takes out another. So I think that he's a good sort of high effort guy. The only question for me then is obviously how will his sort of current a uh, level of technique, his current level of strength, athleticism, all those things. How will that translate against real competition? Um, not that, you know, not that the guys from Delaware, or Central Arkansas are bad. Obviously, I mean, I'm a, I'm a D2 guy, right? So I, I love small school players, but the problem is when we're getting to the next level, we're talking about now a very significant skill gap between uh, some of these lower, lower echelon guys. There's got to be some concern there. And I think that that is sort of accounted for in my grade that ultimately comes out to a 74.75. Overall, then that nets him as my offensive tackle number six to this point. I do think that there's an interesting discussion we had, whether you should play him at tackle or guard, um, because, you know, you look at him and I feel like he kind of looks more like a guard, but then you see uh, sort of that those strength numbers and it's like, uh, well, do I really want to put him against 340 pound defensive tackles? Uh, who are significantly stronger with a 40 pound weight advantage, just by example. I think that there's a question there. Um, how will he do inside if you put him there? I also think that on the edge, there's a question because he's, you know, if you take him say in your Cincinnati, right, he's never faced anybody uh, remotely close to Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, Calais Campbell. And those are guys that you'll have to see six times a year, right? So it's just a question of, uh, 
of really where are you more comfortable with Raddins as a prospect? I think you could probably play him at either one. Might be a little bit more of a developmental guy at tackle. Might be a little bit more of an immediate um, producer at guard, assuming you can pretty quickly add on some weight as well as strength. Um, you know, first off season in the NFL, that, that'll that certainly help get him in a NFL weight room. Maybe he could be 315, 320 by the time the season even comes around. Obviously, uh, you know, gaining weight can be tough for uh, some guys, but I do think that Radden's, you know, if you draft him as a guard, he could certainly get it done um, if he really wanted to. So overall, a solid prospect. I do think he's slightly better than Leatherwood uh, just based off his consistency, right? And even though Leatherwood faced SEC competition, I felt like uh, Radden's on a play-to-play basis uh, just looked a little bit more crisp. Whereas, you know, as I talked about with Leatherwood, there were some plays where he'd look, he'd look great, have almost a perfect rep, and then other times where he would look entirely lost. And then I did also have him uh, quite a bit ahead of Sam Cosme uh, in that sort of second round discussion. I do think he is more in that sort of upper to mid round discussion for me, whereas Cosme would be towards the uh, later half, simply because his technique was was much better than Cosme's, in my opinion. And even though it was against uh, lower levels of competition, whereas Cosme started 34 games at a high D1 level. Um, I just felt like what Radden shows on film, regard, regardless of who he faced, will translate, uh, whether it's the the solid base, the good footwork, the solid agility in and out of his in and out of his various kick slides to power steps, those sort of things. Um, just in terms of reading uh, what the opposing defensive end is doing. Is he a speed rusher? Is he trying to make an inside move? Sure, obviously those things will have to, uh, you have to make those sort of calculations quicker when you're facing uh, significantly better athletes at the next level. But I do think that um, he showed a little bit better job of that sort of side of things than say a guy like Sam Cosby. I don't think I would take him or put him in the same discussion as those top four guys. I have seen some people put him up there. You know, I've seen people put him ahead of Jalen Mayfield. I've seen people have him ahead of Tevin Jenkins. I don't necessarily agree. I think that there is a decent gap there as well. So for me, right in that middle uh, of the second round discussion, wouldn't hate if your team takes him earlier, if they're confident and sort of have a plan for where they want to put him. Um, But otherwise, I think he's just an overall solid guy. So uh, with that being said, that's all I really have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, make sure you leave a comment. Tell me uh, what are your thoughts on Raddins? Do you think he should be a first round grade, second round grade, third round grade? Would you feel comfortable in, with your team uh, potentially drafting and spending a pretty premium uh, second round pick on a guy who, you know, like I said, his best competition was at the senior bowl, right? How would you feel about that? Or did you think that what Radden showed on film um, has a pretty good chance of translating like I did? So um, that being said, obviously, if you did enjoy, if you're, if you've already commented, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, like I said, in the last video, we're on the road to hundred, uh, subscribers, 77 right now, you could always be number 78. So, um, other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm mic'd up, not mic'ing out. Peace guys.